Hello everyone, my name is Dimitri and I'm the developer of Infernodus, a visual AI text analysis tool. Infernodus uses knowledge graphs to help you understand the content of your ideas, the relationships between them and also find the gaps inside so you can generate new insights based on those gaps. In this series of videos I'm showing how you can use Infernodus for different purposes. In the part one I showed how you can use the knowledge graph to analyze your ideas, to find connections between them, to derive some interesting insights. Then in this part I'm going to show you how you can import your data using our brand new import feature, which I really like and I think you will enjoy it too, because it helps you connect to any source of data and to expand your knowledge of a certain topic very quickly in a fun and visual way. And then in the next part, I'm going to show how you can use some of the advanced features of the tool, like the built-in AI, sentiment analysis, uh, text structure analysis to, to help you see if there's any bias inside and so on. So keep watching if you want to learn how it works. First of all, we go to uh, Infernodus and then here you have the apps page. And on the apps page, you have a big button which you can use to start your ideation process. You just click here and then you have these different options of how you can add content inside. So in this case, I'm going to just uh, use some text and I'm going to actually use a topic that I'm interested in, in the, at the moment, electronic musical instruments. And when I add something short like this, Infernodus proposes me a few options uh, for importing my data. So. I can either perform Google search on this search query, so I can click here, musical instruments, okay, let's save this, and what happens is that Infernodus extracts the top 40 search results, you can also change it in the settings, and it visualizes uh, what those results are about. So as you can see, it removed the electronic musical instrument from the graph, because if they were in the graph, they would just take all the attention. So you basically hide them, and Infernodus does it for you automatically. Okay, and then it shows you what else exists on this topic. So obviously the word music is there. Okay, let's also hide it. Then we can see, okay, Casio is quite a popular instrument synthesizer, keyboard pianos, okay, not drum machines. I'm more interested in drum machines. So this already gives me a good idea for what exists out there, what content is out there on this topic. I can also use this toggle button here, and then Infernodes will generate using the built-in AI some names for those clusters. So for example, I can see that most of it is about modular synthesis, then digital keyboards, synthesizer design, and music experts. So this gives me a general idea of the search results on this topic. I understand that modular synthesis is a big word, so if I want to develop something in this direction, I would probably want to cater to this, but also I see that there is a lot about some technicalities of how they're made, and also keyboards are quite popular instruments, not drum machines. So this is very good to know because uh, it gives me a much better understanding of what exists out there on this topic. Now I could also use the same approach and choose another import feature, electronic musical instruments. But in this case, I'm going to use keyword research. And keyword research is uh, very useful because uh, it allows me to see what else people are searching for. So I can click this button here and then it will extract suggested search queries for this topic and visualize the results. And here we don't have much, but we have enough to understand that there is a, those words like picture and name are used quite a lot in search queries about electronic musical instruments. If you click on this and then open the statements, we will see that people are looking for the names and pictures for some reason, which is really strange. Let's hide this from the graph see what else there is. Maybe it makes sense to some people. Me, I'm not interested in their names and pictures. I want to see some more specific details. Electrical measuring tools. Electrical measuring. Okay, so this is interesting because music instruments, they're also somehow related to measuring instruments, which is really great because the project I'm working on is about combining these two together. So. This gives me a really good insight of how I could uh, integrate into the informational demand because this graph is basically the demand for information that people have when they search for musical instruments. And uh, 
if I understand it better and I see the gaps inside, I can also cater to these needs with uh, much more interesting content. So this is how I would use this graph. Now, when you go back to the apps page, you will see that, in fact, you have, I'm using the same query here. In fact, you have several options here. You can search the web, which is what we just did, but you can also explore things with uh, AI. And this is a very interesting mode because basically you can either do chat GPT style and just chat about this topic uh, with Infranodos, but you can also use the live ideation. And this mode is pretty cool because it allows you to develop this idea gradually. But this third one can be interesting too because what it does is that it asks uh, GPT-4 to generate some statements in relation to this topic uh, and visualize it as a knowledge graph. And this is great because if the AI and GPT is a kind of like a repository of all human knowledge, you will also get a very good representation of what people are talking about in general in our society when they talk about electronic musical instruments. It's a really great way to represent uh, what those ideas are about. I will actually choose 20 statements, a little bit more. Click Visualize. I'm using GPT-4, so it's going to be slower because uh, it takes it a longer time to generate so many ideas. But once it's done, you will see uh, the representation of this, right? And here we can again turn on the main topics to see what it's about. So we see that a lot of it is about music production, digital instruments, modern technology, sound creation. Then if we click here, we see also sonic expression. This is interesting because uh, it's not only technical stuff, it's also about how music helps people express themselves. So again, I'm gathering ideas using those data inputs and gradually build an understanding of a certain topic. Okay, now if we go back to the apps, uh, we could also develop this electronic musical instruments step by step. So I go again to explore the AI and then I use the live ideation mode. And what's gonna happen here is that it will add this statement into the graph. And then you see this module here at the bottom uh, let me just move myself a little bit higher. This, this module at the bottom, it will generate some ideas step by step which I can add into the graph. So for example here it says electronic musical instruments offer a unique avenue for creative expression combining technology with artistry for innovative music production. This sounds good. I'm interested in this. I'm going to add this into my uh, archive of ideas. Then let's see if there is anything else. Use technology to synthesize tools, sounds for music. Okay, this is some more information about them. Use their versatility, innovative design. Okay, so I add a few ideas inside. And what's great is that because you're using the graph to represent the connections between them, you can also use the graph to see what is missing inside. So for example, here it will always, this AI module, it will always look at the gaps between different topics. Uh, topics that could be better connected. And here it's proposing us to make a connection between those two, synthesizing sounds and musical instruments. So what about synthesizing sounds and musical instruments? Let's use GPT-4 module, click it, and then uh, unattainable through the use of electronic musical instruments. So this is a little bit of a strange sentence, but actually it's quite good because if you want to generate new ideas, you understand that it's expanding the context here and it shows how musical industries maybe also not only selling the instruments themselves or the industry which produces those instruments, but rather emotions that come with it, which can be very interesting too. So I think I will save this and move on. So as you can see, uh, you can also import data in this iterative manner, which can be very useful if you just want to kind of develop and brainstorm step by step. Okay. Let's say if you had a whole text about music, so for example, uh, let's go on Wikipedia and just write musical, uh, electronic musical instrument. So for example, if you have a text, maybe it's an article or something you wrote yourself. I'm adding this just because uh, I want to demonstrate how you can also use the manual text entry field. Then I go back to Infranodus Oh, sorry, we were actually here. Uh, and then I click here. I just copy and paste this whole text. And when the text is long enough, what's going to happen is uh, that it's just going to suggest to me that I can import the whole text and analyze it as a graph. 
And this is really great if you want to understand uh, what the main topics are inside an article. So this is a Wikipedia article on musical instrument. Again, you can choose to hide some words from the graph, but what I like to do at the beginning is to just look at the main topics. I see that this article is about electronic keyboards, synthesizers, sound generation, and music sequencing. And then there are more if I click here. I can also use this graph to jump into the topics that are interesting to me. So for example, I see there's a whole topic on MIDI control, which I'm kind of interested in at the moment. If I click on this topic, I can see also what it's about. MIDI control, produce pad, MIDI. Okay, so there I understand it's about the MIDI stuff. Great. Now, if I finish reviewing this article, I can also click this button here in the analytics panel, reveal underlying ideas. And what it does is that it, it removes the most popular nodes from the graph and shows what's hiding underneath. And the more you do it, the deeper you will get into the discourse of this text because you will gradually slice off all the obvious ideas from the surface uh, and get to the underlying uh, topics that are not so visible at the first glance. So here we see that it's digital synthesis, audio sequencing, electrophone system and keyboard interface. Remove some more ideas, see what's hiding under. So MIDI controllers, Hammond organ, computer music touchpads. Okay, so there are some articles on how touchpads are used. So you see, I'm kind of using the graph to analyze this information from different sources. By the way, I could also take the whole article as a link and get it into Infernodo. So if I don't want to copy and paste stuff, I can just add a link. Then it's going to suggest it automatically identifies that I'm going to analyze a link. By the way, I can add a few more links here just by copying and pasting them. And then I visualize the link and we will have a pretty similar result. It's probably going to be a little bit different because uh, when it imports the Wikipedia page, it takes the whole content in it, but more or less you see it's the same as what we had before. So this is how you would import the Wikipedia articles or uh, your own writings or any in external links as well. Okay, what else can I show you here? So. Let's see, musical instrument, electronic musical instrument. Let's see if, if there's anything else that I would like to demonstrate today. So we have the Google analysis, keyword research, scientific exploration. Um, these are quite advanced features. So I wouldn't show them in this tutorial, but what I want to show is that you can actually use um, YouTube keywords so, so, for example, let's say I want to make a video on YouTube about electronic musical instruments and I want to see what already exists out there on this topic. So I can select this search query, electronic musical instrument, and then Infranodus will import uh, the names and the titles and the descriptions of all the videos. In this case, it's only titles actually of all the videos on electronic musical instruments so that I can clearly see what people are talking about when they make videos on that. So. I see that, for, for example, this is quite a prominent topic, automaton. I don't know what that is, so I'm going to click this button here, and I'm going to ask GPT-4 to give me an idea of what it's about. It's a musical instrument from Japan, offers a unique way to create melodies, bringing playfulness and innovation into the world of music. Great, I didn't even know that it exists, and you see, I really quickly saw that some really interesting instruments get uh, popular on YouTube. So perhaps if I'm developing an instrument myself or I'm interested in this subject, then I would jump into it. And of course, then you have a lot about MIDI stuff, which is good to know for me because I was kind of thinking that MIDI is maybe a very old technology, but it's probably very good technology. So that's why it's still out there. And then you have a lot of other topics, but it gives me an interesting idea that, okay, I can talk about the MIDI controllers uh, playing music, obviously, and then using some other cluster, like, for instance, how something works, uh, and then make some video on that topic, for instance. So this can also be very useful if you want to analyze this data. Of course, also in Infranodus, you can upload your files. So if you click here and then you go to File, Upload, uh, you can select some files. Um, so for example, I have some notes here, which I took uh, when I was thinking about a certain idea. So I will just take this note here and I will upload it, give it maybe a different name, click Save. 
and then uh, visualize it as a graph and there I can analyze my own ideas. If you don't want it to be stored on the server, you can erase it after here if you click the delete button. So this is how you would import a file. You can also import a CSV file and this is a great way if you would like to analyze uh, some content but with much more dimensions than normal analysis would allow you to do. So here I am going to go to my Infranodos data sets. Uh, they're all public data sets but I just want to show you how I would import the CSV files using those examples. So for instance, let's say um, which one do we choose? Let's choose the EU Grants one. I think that can be pretty interesting. This one is already downloaded, so I'm going to take that. And I'm going to show you how you can import a CSV file now. So you go into the CSV import, then click Next. And then here it proposes you like a preview of that file so that you can choose what you're actually going to analyze. So for me, what's interesting, uh, this file are the EU Grants on... Uh, I think in a certain field. So I'm going to try to understand what those grants are about. I'm going to analyze the title of those grants. So every time there is a title column, I'm going to analyze the data inside. Let's see if there's anything else that we're interested in. Description could also be pretty interesting, but it would be much more data. So I think I will start with the title for now, but you could also choose two columns and analyze them both. Then when I click next, now I can select the filters and the filters is what allows me to then like use the graph to filter the data based on uh, these categories which I select. So usually it should be something that repeats across the rows of the table. In this case, it's going to be the type. I think this will be uh, like a few types that will apply to all the different grants. So this I can use for that. And also I can choose the timestamp. So for example, I say that, okay, I would like to use the start date of the program as my timestamp. And maybe, I'm not sure if I have this graph already inside, so I'm just going to save it with a different name, click next. And then when I click visualize, uh, those two columns which I selected will be presented. Ah, it was a very small file actually, only 11 statements. I think it was like a leftover of the files. But in any case, it's interesting because I can see that the innovation European is there, climate change, and here we have all the tags. So we had these statements on research and innovation and these statements on coordination and support action. So that was pretty interesting and we can use this to then see the different dimensions of the graph in the filter. I will make another video on analyzing a CSV file, but this is just to give you an idea. You represent uh, specific columns as a graph and then you use other columns as filters that allow you to see uh, how this graph would look uh, only in a certain category, for instance. So this is how you would perform this analysis. And finally, we have the external sync and here we can uh, upload our uh, ROM research, Obsidian, LogSec files, or analyze some RSS feeds, which can be very useful. Also link it to Evernote perform news analysis. So for example, let's see uh, what's happening in the news today. If I click here, it has some presets. I can also add my own feeds, but I'm going to use uh, the five different newspapers in English, analyze just the headlines, click visualize, and what happens is that it uses those RSS feeds of the newspapers to retrieve the data about their articles. Usually it's top 10 or 20 has to go on each side, so it takes a little bit of time, and then it will visualize the results from uh, those newspapers. By the way, if it takes long like this, it means that one of the fees is probably not responding, uh, so then it's going to kind of try to get the rest of the data, but in the end you will have something like this, which is the titles of the articles, and uh, you can see what they're writing about, so obviously War, Gaza, Israel, is the main topic and then you can also categorize by different types of the publication. So for example, only Wall Street Journal has articles on war and Christmas and some remote Arctic activity. Let's see what it's about. Ah, okay, so there is some news about Alexei Navalny that he was moved to a remote Arctic prison. Okay, interesting because I was wondering what's happening to him. 
now I find out this through Wall Street Journal and Infernotice. Then Washington Post is writing about the war, New York Times also. But look, for example, The Guardian has uh, much more articles on Christmas and something that happened in Indonesia, but not so much, at least in their top 10 uh, on the war. And then the Financial Times is also writing about uh, UK, naval, home, something. So kind of like not so much about Gaza. You see, then you can analyze the news like this. And you can use any RSS feeds that you like and uh, import them using this feature. So this is how it works. Try it out on infranodus.com. Let me know if you have any questions or comments or if you would like some more import sources. In this video, I'm just interested in giving you a general overview of the different possibilities available out there. There's much more of them. You can actually go into the import page here and see them all listed sort of one by one by categories. You can import plain text, Google YouTube, uh, AI stuff, scientific databases, RSS feeds and so on. And then if you go to the apps, you can also filter the imports by use cases. So for example, if you want to do market research, these are all the different imports for market research that are available. And uh, if you're interested in news analysis, these are some options for news analysis and so on. So you really have uh, multiple different options available to you. And I encourage you to try them out and see if you find something that can be useful for your workflow. In the next video, I'm going to show how you can use the built-in AI features and also some advanced graph comparison features of Infranodus, as well as sentiment analysis and text structure analysis. So if you're interested to be informed about this video when it comes out, subscribe to this channel so that you will get informed. And I thank you for your attention. Goodbye.